everyone! Today, I'd like to talk to you about anxiety, avoidance, and safety behaviors, three concepts that are very closely linked. So anxiety essentially is the appraisal of risk. So it's when you think that something bad is going to happen to you and therefore your body starts to tense up in a way that it would as if you were in physical danger because that's the only way that we know how to respond to danger. It doesn't matter if it's a danger to our uh, economic stability, if it's a danger to our sense of self, if it's a danger to our uh, somebody else we know, our bodies tense in a way that would allow us to either hit harder, run faster, fight or flight, essentially. And that, that's what anxiety is about, is this appraisal of risk. So where things go awry, though, is that if you start feeling anxiety at times when it's not necessarily, we'll call it objectively appropriate, say things like riding in elevators that don't look like they're, you know, dilapidated, you know, like they're falling apart or going to crash, or uh, flying on airplanes, which are, are generally quite safe, when your anxiety starts to overfire. Now, when that happens, what seems like a good idea is avoiding, and avoiding feels fantastic. When you don't do something that you thought you were going to do, that you were anxious about, you get this amazing sense of relief. And that's the issue with avoidance, because when you avoid, you are one, uh, not letting you feel like it's working because whatever you were afraid of didn't happen. You don't get in the elevator. It doesn't crash and plummet to the ground. You feel like you've saved yourself. So you get that reinforcement because the bad thing isn't happening. And then you get that sense of relief, which in and of itself can be reinforcing. And so avoidance feels fantastic. The problem, though, is that it doesn't actually allow the anxiety ever to resolve because what starts to happen is that you think that whatever you're afraid of is actually worth being afraid of and you attribute your safety and the lack of bad things happening to your avoidance. Now, what that's called is a safety behavior. You can also have safety objects. And the definition of a safety behavior is something that you do and when you do it, the bad thing doesn't happen. So then you attribute your own safety to that behavior or action uh, or, or item, as opposed to the, the environment itself being safe. An example of this is imagine you've got a young child who is afraid of the dark because they think that there's a monster under their bed who's going to come out and will, will eat them. And so every night they go to bed with their security blanket and they feel like that security blanket keeps them safe because every night they go to sleep with it, every morning they wake up alive. And so they think, phew, thank goodness I had that security blanket. That's what kept me safe. Now, of course, right, there is no monster under the bed, but what that does is it makes it so that the, that the child does not recognize that their environment was safe. Because every night they go to sleep with that, with that object, every morning, every morning they wake up safe, they attribute their safety to that. You take the blanket away, at first the child is going to have incredible anxiety because they feel like they're going to get eaten. But then every night when they wake up in the morning and they see that they're fine, they start to attribute their safety to the environment being safe as opposed to that object. And the same thing happens with safety behaviors, things that you do that, uh, again, that avoidance part where you don't expose yourself to the situations because you feel like that's the way you keep yourself safe. It stops you from learning that it was actually safe the whole time. And in anxiety treatment, this idea of, of noticing, defining safety behaviors, safety objects, and then uh, working essentially through exposures to learn that th those behaviors, those objects, they, they weren't ever doing anything at all. They were just standing in the way of getting over your fears, of moving past the anxiety. That is a critical component of anxiety treatment and something that if you are a therapist, really pays a lot of dividends to define to a client really early on so that they can start to see how their behaviors are continuing to reinforce this loop where they stay anxious when they might not have to. So thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully this has been helpful. I look forward to talking to you again soon.